This is Off Planet Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer. Randy has the evening off, so I am flying it solo, and I have a great guest tonight uh, here to talk about <laughs> uh, Oregon Energy, Pyramid Power, Mind Control in the Asian American Community, and... Uh, the cool and the crazy and the creepy of the underground art and music scene here in Los Angeles. My brother, a fellow Angelino, Masaki Miyagawa, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Hi, Emily. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, it's, this one's been a while coming. I've been, you know, I, 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 your name has been passed to me several times for a couple of years now from lots of people that I like and respect and uh, finally got around to doing it. I'm sorry it took so long, but I um, was very uh, intrigued with our conversation the other day and all of these awesome tools you sent me. And I'm super excited for this conversation. So let's get it on. <laughs> All right. So for and some of our, you know, I know you've been on Robert's show and Raw's show, and we have some, lots of crossover in our audience. But for, for those who haven't, uh, who haven't met you before, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're a very unique individual. So let us know a little bit about yourself. And uh... Sure. Well, my name's Masaki Miyagawa. Very Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese name, but uh, my family has been in uh, Los Angeles for like 80 plus years. Wow, so, longer than my uh, family. Yeah, so I, hey man. About the same. My, 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 about the same. my family been yeah. here longer than most white folks, you know? Yeah, uh, my, my, my family came over here. My dad's family moved here in the first wave of like Jews from the East Coast, like in the late 40s. So okay. almost as long, but you've been here longer. Wow, all righty. Well, I, I, you know, my, my dad's side, they, he grew up in Boyle Heights, which was uh, one of the original Jewish yeah. communities because, you know, uh, Los Angeles, very interesting. People see it as so multiracial, multicultural now, uh -huh. but it was actually one of the whitest, most racist places you could be back in the day. <laughs> we had, we had housing covenants. That's why the ethnics and Jews included lived in these ethnic ghettos yeah uh, some more is like uh the the black areas or you could have like the mexican area which is more east la Boyle heights mm -hmm. and so my dad grew up there they they literally have housing covenant covenants if you uh get some like an old house that you buy say in eagle rock or something you might see in the title of the house it says only uh wasp white anglo-saxon protestant can buy this house wow yeah. <laughs> so so yeah my family's been here a long time I know a lot of the the history through my family and the community, but uh, you know now that narrative of uh, you know my my temple is kind of was more activist, also my Buddhist temple. Uh -huh. So very much in the mindset of uh, Black Panthers in the '60s. Mm -hmm. But you know we're in 2019. Mm -hmm. that, that that old narrative does not really fit today. <laughs> and uh, but also. You know, my, my mother's side, uh, Buddhist priest line uh, for 400 years or so, wow. going back to Japan. So I had a lot of that influence, which I didn't really understand, or I didn't understand some of the more occulted or deeper aspects until now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I have, my uncles are Buddhist uh, ministers and Buddhist scholars, mm -hmm. but, you know, I pass by some of the things that I'm coming on now coming upon they don't know what the hell i'm talking about mm. <laughs> but, but it very much connects to you know ancient bloodlines and who is yeah. the buddha what is buddhism and that kind of thing and funny enough the buddha the swastika the yeah. that kind of vortex energy it connects to pyramids mm -hmm. so you know it's it's you know everything if you're into anything you study it 100 percent. you're going to find the thread that connects to everything else mm -hmm. because if it's true and it real it's a tapestry of reality that we live in. So um, it's so interesting the way the swastika is <clears throat> connected with all of these ancient and spiritual cultures. It obviously comes up in Indian culture. It's, you know, uh -huh. it, it's opposing yoga, right? It's opposing yeah. the yoga. And, you know, it's so interesting 
is uh, my grandmother was very tra traveled and interested in Eastern cultures, you know, India, sure. Asia, all this kind of stuff. But she's a Jewish woman, right? She's a, you know, a Jewish woman. Yeah. And I, I live here in her, the house that she bought when she moved here from Brooklyn, you know, mm -hmm. in the forties. And she has uh, furniture that she acquired from, you know, the mm -hmm. Orient that has swastikas on it. So here's a Jewish sure. woman who understands the true meaning of swastika and is not afraid to have it in her house. Right. Well, yeah. you know, the, uh, I think we mentioned off here, the, at least the European Jews, mm -hmm. they come from the Slavic sphere. Uh, yes. And I mean. actually the swastika mm -hmm. comes from the, you know, people know like India, Hindu, yep. Buddhism is kind of like an offshoot of what they call the Vedic culture. Vedic, yeah. But what people don't know, a lot of people don't know is, you know, the, the white people, they were also part of the Vedic culture, yes. you know, say before they were Christianized. Yes. So, uh, I don't know. I think it was with Danny. He just did a show with Danny. You were saying yeah. that, you know, there's a big uproar. These, these white ladies are appropriating Hindu culture. Right. People might want to do their homework because, uh, you know, th yeah. this is a thing I've talked about before. You know, uh, especially in L.A., we've always had new age. We were talking like about it in terms of how ridiculous it was for that to be being said. Well, right. But if yeah, you yeah. really understand where yeah. the culture came from. It's white people. Basically, at least, at least half, of, half of it was coming from there. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, and again, you get into these topics as highly controversial. Mm -hmm. But as I understand it, you know, the whole uh, Aryan, mm -hmm. Aryan yeah. is o Orion. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, it just, so, this stuff doesn't. I mean, so yeah. my family, German and Dutch on my mother's side, and mm -hmm. Eastern European Jew from all the Slavic kind of cultures and stuff on my dad's side. So it's yes, swastikas all around, <laughs> yeah. and, and Vedic cult. That's that kind of yeah. what you were. You and I had an email thread or a message thread on Facebook the other day, and basically everything you were bringing up about this topic was yep, yep, yep. Touches right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know the the pole star. Uh, you know, the, I think it's the Big Dipper. Mm -hmm. Four seasons, the Big Dipper turns, it makes a swastika, and the Orion is right in the center. Interesting. And is it all good or bad? We, we know about all these mythologies about, mm -hmm. you know, how there are great wars, there were rises and falls. Sometimes the cultures, they became decadent and, and fallen. Mm -hmm. But this, this is our, it, it's at least one of the major stories on the planet. And mm -hmm. no matter if you're uh, black, white, Asiatic and so forth. Well, we are all connected to this story in some way. There, there's a, and you could say like there's one, one history that connects the earth. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, are you a practicing Buddhist? I mean, you know, I go to temple and so forth. Yeah. And I, I don't think that. Uh, what 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 I what I say is you know the Buddhism at least you know that I. I grew up in, and I grew up in a uh, pure land school, the Amida Buddha. Uh, it is very open, or Buddhism in general, I would say, they don't say you have to do this and don't do that, right? Yeah, no. They, there, there are certain guidelines, mm -hmm. and the, the Buddha, he said, you know, if you find to be something, you know, what I said is untrue, then you know for yourself what is true. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's a little more open that way. Yeah. But what I feel is that, Everything that Buddha says is is very correct. But now, if you add on to things like looking into energies, like mm -hmm. uh, which was never talked about really specifically when I was going to temple, you know. But if you start understanding the en the energies, some of the historical links and things like that, mm -hmm. it really starts opening your mind. Uh, yes, and and, oh, and it kind of opens the story more to mm -hmm. me. So it's not like, say, if I was, uh, and this is nothing against anybody, say I was a, a Christian, and then I said, like, well, I really disagree with this part. And it, to me, where I came from has just expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still go to temple here and there, but not as much because I think it's a great place for community. Mm -hmm. But my interest, now I was telling you, uh, I have uncles that are Buddhist scholars, Mm -hmm. And I pass by some of the stuff that I'm finding on, you know, the connections with the, the kind of those old Slavs, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, you know, the, the Buddha, basically, we don't know exactly what he looked like. They, they say he had blue eyes, 
Mm -hmm. So maybe he was dark melanated and he had kinky hair, but he definitely had blue eyes mm -hmm. and his tribe was Southern Slav, you know? Interesting. So yeah. I'm passing this by and does it really matter, you know, so much the ethnicity and stuff? Because this is where, this is why the, the Nazis were so interested in, in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Because see, uh, if you're coming from a very 3D perspective, you're going to start thinking about things about the master race. Yeah. But you know that that uh we can pass uh we can play different roles man woman black white so that that that's so, yes, so much <laughs> focus focus on this 3d is retarded yes but i think it is important to to at least start looking into and understanding there is a historical timeline that, that links these tribes and what yes. happened so i pass this by my uncles and they don't know what i'm talking about but it is all documented it's just that a lot of this has never been put in a context. Yeah. You know, and I don't understand all of it, but let's say from around 2014, when the, the, the coup and the, the war in Ukraine was going on. Yes. For some reason, I became very interested in the Russia sphere, in the Slavic yep. sphere. And that really uh, started opening up a lot of things to me that actually I've, we've been living in the whole time. But if, you, if, if it's not put in the context, then you don't really see the significance, you know? Yeah. A couple of things I want to, uh -huh. all sorts of uh, points are being ticked for me here. Yeah. So I don't know, Buddhism, Buddhism is something I don't know too much about. Uh, I guess I first learned about Buddhism when I heard Tina Turner chanting Nam Yo Horen Gekyo, <laughs> right? Right. And, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I did, um, I guess I'm a little bit more familiar with Taoism. Uh, Tao Te Ching is one of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that that's in some ways connected to and related to Buddhism, but I don't know a whole lot about it. But what you were just talking about in terms of as you looked into things and have started to, you know, understand about the energies and your uncles don't know what you're talking about. Um, mm. I've recently been spending some time uh, reading some ancient Indian texts, you know, like the Bhagavad mm -hmm. Gita and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And I'm very visual. Like I like to close my eyes and see what's going on back there. I do that when I'm dancing with mm -hmm. music. I do that just when I'm bored, I do it when I'm listening to somebody say something or read something sometimes. And it's amazing the things that I see when going through, when, you know, some, mm -hmm. when the Bhagavad Gita is being read, I see things that when I draw them, they look like very high technology, free energy device kind of stuff, right? That is what I'm seeing as this is mm -hmm. being read. So I've always had the, you know, I was raised without religion, but my, uh, intuitive understanding of all of these sort of religious and ancient texts is that they're really encodings about both, you know, free energy kind of energy and about mm -hmm. the proper care for the body and how, you know, how, how this system really works because this is actually one of the coolest technologies there is. Right. And so. Well, I, I think, I think one of the things is that uh, not only do as are we as individuals living, you know, it, it it's spiritual boot camp here on planet earth. Yeah. So especially you, me and, and your audience, we got our butts kicked, man, you know, and it's, it's, it's not easy. And so not only are we as individuals living with uh, trauma and we have to do our healing and so forth in this life. Yeah. The human race is highly traumatized from the rises and falls of civilizations. Yes. And I mention this because if you look at the ancient texts, it's like, uh, uh, there's a there's a reason why people are basically amnesiac because we got hit on the head so hard through these you know basically I think everybody can feel that we're coming to some kind of like singularity or a pinch point right now yeah and this has happened many times before and and you know the themes are basically the same same over so, so over. The, the, yeah. the thing is is to be mindful and just understand that these are cycles yeah and and then uh you know then you don't get so i would say you have a, a have a bit of um don't get so emotionally involved to the news items and so forth of course yeah. that, that, that basically you know uh, a lot of the things that are happening there they're much larger than we as one person can can do anything about but what we can do is is within our own space uh take our power back be sovereign yeah. And a lot of these frequencies and so forth, they're intruding on your space. And I think a lot, especially a lot of people that have been through trauma and so forth, were never able to own their space. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you know, they don't have a strong sense of self. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, it's very important interpersonal, uh, you know, relationships and things to maintain some boundaries. Mm-hmm. But then you take that and, you know, this could also apply to some of the people that maybe in the 90s or 2000s are, you know, aware of the whole like sovereign citizen or, you know, the whole patriot movement. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can apply that of, of the whole legal status to your energetic space. Totally. Because, uh all of these frequencies are encroaching on your space and mm-hmm. so forth, the Wi-Fi, the 5G. But there are tools now that you can use, and I, I sent you some of them. Yeah. Um, you know. I am now the proud owner of this amazingly powerful yeah. and beautiful pyramid. We got, we got the gold and the black. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, that, that basically that you can harmonize the energy in, in your space. And I would say that, uh, there's, there's two directions. If you just want to put it in the simplest terms, mm-hmm. there's chaos and order. Mm-hmm. And in a holistic system, you actually need both yes. to build things up like, and break things. Just like the tide uh, comes in, the tide goes out. But there are groups and people that focus totally on chaos. Mm-hmm. You know? and, yeah. But things like a quartz crystal, right? A quartz crystal the, well, the, the, there's a lattice structure. It's, it's, it's literally order because it's in a crystalline structure, right? Yeah. So anything that creates harmony and order is going to raise your frequency. It, a lot of these uh, Wi-Fi cell phone signals, and it's expanding more and more. You have the Fitbit where people are wearing, uh, they're, they're adding more unneeded frequencies as a mode of convenience. And this is one thing about the age of Aquarius is the convenience factor. Aquarius yeah. is connected to uh, technology. Mm-hmm. So, and this is nothing against Aquarian people, but I'm saying the, the, the pure sign of Aquarius unaspected by anything else. Yeah. Uh, it's about the convenience. So a lot of people, they will give up their freedom for the convenience factor. Yeah. And in the same way, I'm going to wear a Fitbit. I'm wearing the iWatch. I have like the AirPods in my ear. That's irradiating, like be, like uh, radiation in my brain now. It's like when I see people with those, yeah. what, the ones that don't have the wire, like they're just like yeah. this. I'm like, you realize you just have a microphone in your ear, and you're gonna. That's <laughs> that's like the you're, you're yeah. halfway to voice to skull. Like you have your receptor there, and whatever yeah. they want, it's like a microphone just to speak right into your. You know, yeah. And they look ridiculous. And and you know we had the the consumer electronics show in L.A. maybe a month ago. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a big. Uh, trade show for electronics yeah there is just some stuff that like there's no need to do but mm-hmm. they're rolling it out i saw that they have uh like a wi-fi diaper monitor that you <laughs> stick on the diaper to tell you that your baby needs to change the diaper meanwhile the, the gonads of the child are being like beamed they're probably going to be sterile and yeah. it's like that's that's what i'm talking about is that, uh, it, you know, and it's not a big problem if you're aware of it, but the people are unaware of these frequencies that are invisible to the naked eye. But yeah. if you look on the Wi-Fi dropdown of your computer or laptop, you know, how many do you see? You see like yeah. 20, 30. These yeah. are all overlapping frequencies that we didn't have. You know, we didn't have cell phones when we were growing up. Nope. You know, that, that may be shocking to some of the teenagers out there, <laughs> but this is, this is true. When you went to the rave, they uh you would go to the map point right yes i love the, the you, you would call the phone number and they would say you know you go to this intersection yep. they would have a person with the paper flyer then yep. they would they would go to sometimes like a second location second one. Where, where you picked up the real location of the warehouse a party and then you would drive out that will never happen again because somebody's yep. going to post something on instagram and geotag it with the gps location yeah you know back in the day it was like that where uh you know I don't think that'll ever go back to that because things are being more and more tracked and traced and so forth, so forth. But, uh, you know, it, this it, idea, this idea that anybody has in the underground that they're actually hiding from anybody when everybody has a cell phone with them at the party. <laughs> oh, right. Right. I saw, I, I saw, I saw, the I, I don't ever bring my cell phone with me to parties. Yeah. I don't ever bring my cell phone with me to parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real quickly, before we get on to the other thing, I just want to hit back on something you said when you said that you became fascinated with the whole situation with the Ukraine and you started looking to the Russia sphere. Yeah. I've been fascinated with Russia for pretty much my entire life because of my involvement oh. with gymnastics. And during the, oh, well, yeah. During the you know, 70s and 80s, yeah. the, the Russians were 
so far ahead of everybody else. I mean, when the communist system fell, it's, it's deteriorated you know, slowly mm -hmm. since then. But one of the things that I became aware of actually through a Ukrainian coach that I knew that worked at the gym that I did is that part of the reason that the Russians were so good had to do with their understanding of energy technology, energy, oh, you know, yeah. energies and energy technology. And she told me that part of the reason that they could do like for their last tumbling pass, harder things than most could do on their first mm -hmm. was because they used something called oxygen cocktail, right? They had some sort of oxygen technology that they used, that they did a therapy with that made them, you know, able to breathe much better at the end of a routine than, than everybody else was. And that was part of the key to their success. Mm -hmm. So they've been really clear on some of these kinds of uh, energy creating uh, technologies and spirit, you know, and concepts you know, and they've been using it in their athletics and that's how they gained such dominance. Um, so I've been kind of fascinated with Russian people and Russian culture for my whole life because of that. But yeah, it was not um, surprising to me when I started to look into information, you know, in the early 2000s was when I really started digging into, you know, I always was the kind of kid that felt like there's what you think is going on and there's what's really going on. They're never the same thing. But I really started to dig, you know, in the early 2000s. And it didn't surprise me to find about all of the, you know, kinds of experiments that had gone on in Russia with pyramids and torsion fields and, and you know, all of, that, all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, even with the things like the woodpecker and, you know, all, all this kind of stuff, they have always had their own sort of, uh, you know, secret energy projects and programs that, uh, you know, sometimes were similar to some of ours and sometimes were very different and far more advanced, yeah? Well, you know... Uh... A lot of the, because I work a lot with the heat, you know, in America, we can't say healing, but let's just say the, the therapy technology is using <laughs> frequency mm -hmm. uh, as far as like biofeedback. I keep hearing you say that. Like, I, what is the deal with that? Like I had a friend who was a very well-known holistic practitioner and she was told she couldn't say cure. She had to say heal. And now you're saying you can't say heal. You oh, maybe, it. maybe it's cure, but even yeah, I, I, even I stay away from healing. Okay. Just because you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know how it is in the you yeah, know, totally, medical, yeah. medical, but, uh, they don't even oh, send the, oh. they don't even send the FDA to close you down anymore. They just kill you and say you killed yourself, or, or something like. And it's yeah. funny because you know as, you know as uh, restricted as China is in some ways. And I lived in China many years ago. I lived mm -hmm. there for one year. Uh, I know people that are working with because uh, a lot of the factories are in China. Mm -hmm. you know? They don't mess with them. You know, if you say something against the government, that's yeah. Something else. But you know, compare that to here, where if you say something if against you say the government, anything, yeah, right. Yeah, if you say something like, in China, it's just don't say anything against the government, and don't practice Falun Gong, right? Those but are but really but, but the thing <laughs> is, is that a lot of these technologies, uh, some of the Chinese have cloned technologies from the Russians. Yeah, so a lot of those these frequency technologies were actually coming out of military projects, and mm -hmm. like, you know, as far back as the '60s. Yes, and uh, they had some of this biofeedback for like the cosmonauts, and I'm sure yep. they were using it for Olympic team. Yep. And that's great. Yes, it's great. Yes, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's great stuff. And uh, I think what happened was, you know, with the fall of the, the Soviet bloc, yeah. they started uh, commercializing or declassifying this for commercial use. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and you got to think that's pretty amazing. In the 70s, they mm -hmm. had biofeedback yeah. and uh, technologies to, uh, you know, remedies for diseases and different conditions i mean this mm -hmm. is basically i think even one of the devices they called the star trek device where mm -hmm. it was like a handheld you know like you yeah. scan the person this is like you know before they even had personal computers right <laughs> but but now it's a I, great but, but, but misaki i think mm -hmm. these things have been around since the beginning of time I, 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 I think these energy, he, energy and healing kinds of therapies and technologies and stuff, mm -hmm. I think this is like the oldest, most ancient knowledge and, there, and stuff that there is, right? Like I, I, well, think, oh, I, I think we have lost, uh, we have lost stuff. I don't think we haven't gotten it yet. I think that it's been so, you know, people are now starting to rediscover something that was kind of here at the very beginning of, you know, humans, you know, as humans started to build higher civilizations. Well, you know, uh, I'll tell you something that I always wondered about, and I'm sure that people are aware of Nazca lines, and actually these huge yeah. glyphs are all over the planet. Yes, yeah, the megaliths, yeah. Okay, so 
uh, a lot of people are thinking that there must have been some kind of flying ships because otherwise, how, why, why, and how could you even make something so huge, like miles wide, that's a symbol that you can only see from the sky, right? Right. There's a very famous temple in Japan. It's one of the early ones in Nara. Uh, I believe it's called Todaiji. They have the Daibutsu. It's a huge bronze Buddha inside this very large temple. Uh, I think it was built around maybe 700 AD. So this is near the founding of the Japanese state, you know, the Japanese nation. Mm -hmm. It was founded at that time. And uh, they had ambassadors from China, from Korea, from Vietnam, from India. But in my mind, I'm saying, how the hell did all these guys know to be there at that time? Right. When supposedly people were only going by boat. Right. <laughs> you know, so uh, there's a lot of these uh, interesting, sto you know, or historical facts. But, you know, now taking into consideration that, you know, say Nazca lines and things like this, maybe there were some technologies that we're not really told about. Yeah. That existed back then. Yeah, that, and then also, mm -hmm. and then there's the other part that what actually is time and does it really exist and is everything sort of an ever present now and we're just somehow have had things arranged that, for us in a linear fashion. That, that, that's another thing that I've heard that uh, the understanding and the view is much more multidimensional mm -hmm. and my school of Buddhism is kind of uh, not, an, I don't want to say it in a bad way, but it is kind of an end times view mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, and I noticed this that about say in the traditional thinking of the timeline, because e there's even questions about what year we're in now yeah, because of the whole flamenco and the, yep. the, the new chronology, like basically yep. The, so, the, the, the whole time, the whole time, I may be shifted 1000 years. That Sylvia Ivanova yeah. information yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. So, but about 1000 years ago, uh, there was a major, it was things were going to go down, you know, and now it seems like just like Edgar Casey was saying and many other seers that we've kind of hit a bottom and things are coming up. We went, we're in a thousand year turn, you know? Yeah. But my school of Buddhism, uh, basically, you know, they, they had a period called the Heian period, which uh, was very stable in Japan. Mm -hmm. well, you know, and I'm sure it was hard for the farmers, but as far as the court people, they're having a good old time doing their calligraphy and all this stuff. And then it started going to a warring states period of a chaos. And uh, as far as like the East Asians, like Chinese, Korean, Japanese, things have, they've, been, they've seen these cycles cycle so many times. It's one of the main things that, you know, the Asians, they do not like disorder. No. You know? <laughs> the Asian parents, man, they, it's all yeah. about order, right? Yeah. They, they, say, they say East Asian is ruled by Capricorn, which is like, I don't care about your feelings. You just got to go get your degree and, you know, you'll be, you be doctor, you'll be lawyer, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But Asians like order because yeah. we've seen these cycles. The, the historical memory is much longer than, say, like the America. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the founder of my school, Shinran Shonin, of uh, they call Pure Land Buddhism, the thinking was that things, or the feeling, the general sentiment was things were going down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, probably knowing now, you know, psychic viewers and things like that, and, and astrologers and occultism, understanding the cycles, they probably understood that they were going to go into a long period of, you know, low frequency. Yeah. And so, uh, Shinran Shonin, the Pure Land view is like, in China they call Amitofo, or the mm -hmm. Amida Buddha, is that, you know, we're so degraded now, all you can hope for, you know, is, is to say uh, the name of Amida, instead of like, you know, doing the Zen meditation, all this, that's all you can hope for, the things, it's, everything's gone to pot, so just, yeah. you say to Amida, try to be a good person, that kind of thing, but uh, yeah, so, but I think now things, even though, you know, if you're in such a long, like a th we're at least in a thousand year turn, but there's multiple cycles because, you know, like the, what do they call it, the great year? We've gone through the, the, the 12 signs now, uh, you know, uh, the, the, is it the 26,000 years? Yes. We're, we're, we're at restart now. Mm -hmm. And every time you go to the restart, there's great cataclysms because it's like, it's like the, 
it's it's the one of the biggest shifts mm -hmm. for the planet but then also i think the the mentality of the people mm -hmm. so it can seem i mean it is chaotic but i think we have actually hit a kind of a bottom and we're coming up now have you ever listened to he passed away no. several years back but i used to love listening to eon xl lungold Oh, I remember the Mayan calendar guy. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, he, uh -huh. listening to him yeah. talk about what you're talking about right now. Uh -huh. I love listening to that. And of course, Jose Arguez, who we've talked about on the show yeah. numerous times with the time is art idea. But mm -hmm. I used to love listening to ENXL Lungold just talk about the way things were just dropping off. You know what I mean? Like the, mm -hmm. as we went through some of these cycles and listening to him was amazing. I haven't thought about, I, I need to pull up some of this information, but his stuff well, was I, I really feel that at least what I'm feeling and I kind of look at what I've done, yeah, uh, cause like I wasn't, I've only been, I mean, most people know me from the, the Orgone pyramids, right? Which we're going to talk uh, about. I, I, I started like maybe five years ago, mm -hmm. but, uh, I feel like 2012 was kind of like the people, at least they had the seed, they had yeah. the seed to, to want to know more. Yeah. That, that kind of time is done. Like we did so many years of listening to shows. Yeah, uh, I can't even like listen like to yours. Uh, kind of like seeing what, feeling out what the framework is, right? Yeah. I think we have a good sense now. Mm -hmm. And after 2012, people started to implement or become active. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of uh, what I see. This stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the reason we do the shows at this point is not yeah. like the age of information is over. Like right. Like mm -hmm. at this point, if we haven't gotten it, we're not going to get it. The purpose mm -hmm. of the shows for us at the, now is just to find the others, right? Find the others, mm -hmm. connect, activate each other, activate ourselves, right? That's pretty much the purpose of the shows. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, those years, like from like 2005 to 2012, that was like data sponge, right? Just consume as much information as you could. Like it was a, mm -hmm. you know, a smorgasbord or an all you can eat buffet, right? Well, and you know, I think, uh, especially, you know, I'm, I'm right at the crack of Scorpio. So Scorpio is like the detective. So mm -hmm. I love all this stuff. I'd be like oh, digging, too, yeah. digging in and yeah, all that too. stuff. But, but, you know, the other thing is, is that you don't want to stay in that place. No. Because if, if you Paralyzed. always paralyze, uh, I mean, just like with this Jesse Smollett thing, right? Yeah. I, I mean, America has a lot of unresolved racial issues. My parents were born behind barbed wire because of racism in America. Japanese yeah. Americans, 100,000 men, women, and children, World War, World War II were put in concentration camps. People talk about the FEMA camps. Right. My family already been in the FEMA camp. You know? <laughs> so, so, but, but, you know, uh, and there's a truth to that. And I, you know, I worked at the Japanese uh, museum in uh, downtown LA, little Tokyo. Yeah. I've been. And so in my twenties, we did, I did a lot of film work, uh, film production. Mm -hmm. so a lot of what we would do is just, they call life history interview mm -hmm. where you would hear the, the history of the old timers, some of these guys had served in the military in World War II. And, and a lot of them had never told their, you know, Asians in general, uh, I mean, we are successful, mm -hmm. but emotionally very suppressed, yes. you know? So I think it's important if there's a truth or something, uh, some traumatic things, it's good to voice, you know? But that's different than this victim culture that's being promoted by the powers that be because that keeps you always as a victim mm -hmm. you know so and that, it's that, kind of like a balance you have to and the same thing i think what you were trying to say was the same thing with the conspiracy community they begin to exactly. feel so, yeah yeah exactly and yeah. you know uh everybody has their way i do my thing whatever people want to do that's their thing but i think it can be tough if your whole gig or what you focus on is always talking about I'm a my lab or th those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you need to go through that, but eventually try to, you know, do enough healing work where so you can start stepping out of that and say that that's, there's, that's true. That's something I've been through, mm -hmm. but now I'm, now what I've been through adds to my healing work or my practice or whatever. What, I mean, we like to say that, yeah. like, uh, we like to refer to it as be, having, ha been, having been an experiencer, right? And now that you've had that experience, you don't have to have it again, right? And so, yeah. you know, take the things that you sort of learn from that, move forward. I mean, like, I, I, I agree. The, um, it just, it got boring to me after a while. Like, okay, like how many times are you going to tell, you know what I mean? Like, sure, our, our pasts are our pasts, our stories are our stories. And, 
you know, mm-hmm. moving on from them doesn't make them any less true. Right. But mm-hmm. like once you've had that experience and you've come to understand it and done some healing work, well, now it's a chance for you to write your, you know, write the story the way you want it to be and not just continue to, you know, play out that sort of story and narrative. Well, you know, uh, pure, for the most part, uh, people contact me because they're interested because everybody knows 5G and those mm-hmm. kind of They contact me because they just want some advice or good tools to help them with the Wi-Fi frequencies. But periodically, I do have people that say there's some uh, TI or they're mm-hmm. having some abduction stuff. W- what I usually say is, you know what? Because when you get into that area, there can be so many factors. I say, yeah. you know, for the EMF thing, I definitely, you know, most common feedback, if you have a good energy tool, is you're going to get better sleep. Yeah. And I, I really can't say what's going to happen with the other things. But, so I make no claims about, you yeah. know, it's going to stop your abduction or whatever. But it's very interesting, the feedback I have gotten from some of the people. And this is individual case-by-case basis. But I had uh, one case, uh, there's an author that, you know, he's had abduction stuff his whole life. And he said it cut it down a lot. Mm-hmm. And there was another case. Uh, there was a woman in town that basically had portals in her bedroom, mm-hmm. according to her, all kinds of activity. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> she, she had so many pyramids. She kind of made a boundary around her bed. Yeah. And she says these things would come up to the boundary, but they wouldn't cross over. You know? yeah. So uh, I think in general, if you have a high frequency, mm-hmm. The bad guys, they don't like that. That's, I mean, I, you know? I, I completely, I mean, another mm-hmm. angle on the same thing is mm-hmm. for me, a lot of the BS stopped when I changed my diet and got my body really healthy, mm-hmm. right? Like, cause that changes your frequency for sure. But, you mm-hmm. know, also the stuff that we have going on in our, our bodies or technology, it's an information mm-hmm. system and what you put in there allows certain things in, you know, same with mm-hmm. alcohol and drugs and all this kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, absolutely. The best thing, you know, uh, the first thing when, when somebody comes to me and says that they want help, you know, they're having targeted individual issues or mind control issues, or mm-hmm. they're being attacked or you know, aliens. Mm-hmm. If the first thing I say is, are you willing to change your diet? And they look at me like, and I'm like, a couple things will happen. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, you know, you have a brain in your gut. That's actually where the mind control comes from more than the brain up here. This is where the compartmentalization mm-hmm. happens, but the activity happens down here. Are you willing to change your diet? Uh, you know, and I'd say, you know, for a lot of the people that I've worked with, and certainly in, in, in my own case, that not only did a lot of the BS, you know, become greatly reduced or stopped, but suddenly all the memories that I couldn't quite access before became very clear. Well, emotional brain, right? Yeah. Well, y- you know, uh, my my kind of observation with uh, the SJWs, the Social Justice Warrior, Our favorites, and, yeah. and a lot of the the hardcore activists. Yeah, they're under mind control. Uh, <laughs> you know, with all of the GMO and the pesticides, your ba- uh-huh. you know the guts of people are so hammered today. Yeah, and I have to th- think that has something to do with because. They're so reactive and off balance. Mm-hmm. And they even say triggered, right? Yep. Like, like, like microaggression and I'm triggered. Well, well tri- tri- like trigger is a word for mind control people. Mind control, yep. <laughs> so, I mean, in that way too, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in both of us. Trigger is our- also a word for gun, right? And these people, these mm-hmm. SJWs are being used like weapons. And, and so yeah. for me, and you know, both of us are in L.A., yeah, and I think I think the coasts are some of the the strongholds of this kind of thing. But when I I see this kind of you know the SJ, SJW thing going on, I just think that you know these are also people that need healing. Totally, because, because you know they've probably been through things that they don't even understand, and they're just they're just uh, maybe being channeled into that kind of aggression or reactiveness, mm-hmm. and they don't even understand what's happened to them. You know, no, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So mm-hmm. we've th- th- danced around your, your, your work with the Orgone pyramids here. Um, this is what people mostly know you for. And mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what I would like you to kind of draw the connection is, is, you know, how did you get into researching alternative information? And then how did that land you at 
becoming uh, an wow. organist? Well, I would have to I would have to say that before the pyramids, because mm-hmm. I had my own I had my own stuff to deal with, and I didn't understand it at first. So uh, yep. we're both in LA. Yeah, I used to listen, you know, Royal Hollywood, late night KPFK. Okay. It's, it's, it's a Pacifica station uh, yep. in LA. So I used, to, I used to have a lot, you know, it's like midnight to 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of like 2000. So it was okay. like way before, I mean, there was internet, but not like how it is today. Yeah. So uh, they had some late night, you know, conspiracy shows on there. Mm-hmm. And that kind of like really opened up my mind. Mm-hmm. That was a starting point. It wasn't perfect, but it, it was yeah. a starting point. And then uh, over the years, you know, just researching all the different areas from the bankers and that sort of thing, the Federal Reserve, then, you, you know, there's the whole alien area, there's the secret project area. But what I didn't understand at that time was subconsciously I was being pushed or my interest was opening up there because there was something in there that I was going to find to heal myself. Yes. And I was also highly interested in the whole uh, mind control thing. Because, uh, now, to my knowledge, I haven't been in any, any projects, but I did have some blocked memories. Mm-hmm. And so, and it took many, many, many years. It, it probably took me like 10 years, like every day of, you know, searching for the clues, searching what tool can I uh, use to, to heal myself, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I could, because if you have some, you know, Block, it's basically energetic, but it's also memory stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't go to Kaiser Hospital and say like, hey, you know, I, I've got like some karmic blocks and all this stuff. <laughs> like, go, hey, hey, buddy, we got something for you. It's called the psych ward, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to go to the, the total metaphysical side because there was things in there that to basically, like, how can you, you may appreciate this. How can you fix the problem if you can't even remember what the problem is? Right. You just know something's yeah. wrong and you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So b- basically, uh, that's, you know, I started on that path and it took a long time. Um, but you know, I did some, uh, the holographic kinetics. Mm-hmm. Some you may know. Yeah. It's, it's basically, uh, Aboriginal, uh, healing combined with NLP. Yep. And they're just a facilitator. Mm-hmm. They, they do a guided meditation and they help you see, help you I've, to see I've, your, I've, your I've had I've been we've we've had yeah. so we've had holographic connects talked about it on the show before yeah and, you know people some know some of our yeah. we have some mutual friends that are into it mm-hmm. that they're they're known by people on this show and I've had it done I've had yeah. I've experienced it before yeah so that, you know that, you know, that kind of breaking away and, and taking their own twists on the modality now and it's getting pretty interesting too so so, but what was interesting was once that was winding down, and I can't remember the exact year, but it was maybe around 2012, I had a session, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, maybe a couple months after, it wasn't like major, like I didn't cry and that kind of stuff, but it's like, I realized one day, I was like, hey, all the 30 plus years of trauma or whatever, <laughs> I'm not walking on eggshells anymore. Yeah. And then... You know, like we were talking about, then when you've, we always have more to work on, but that, that, that aspect where you're not just laying in bed and you can't do anything and walking on eggshells, it's like, okay, I'm healed enough now to be proactive, not reactive. Yeah. And then uh, around 2014, that's when I started making, uh, you know, some people say organite, but the organite term has been trademarked. So I say yeah. organ pyramid. Yeah. So, uh, and these, these are basically a very simple combination of uh, resin, uh, metal particles or metal shavings, quartz crystals. Sometimes, you know, you may know the shungite. Mm-hmm. I, put shungite I, I, in- I wear the shungite. A shungite is so powerful. I really like the shungite. Yeah. Also very interesting. It comes from Siberia. Uh, well, it comes from Russia and, yeah. and uh, my friend Lada Ray who's a feng shui master, but she comes from an old Russian family. Uh-huh. She calls Russia the great balancer, where it's not uh, in the feng shui system. She says, Russia is not masculine or feminine. It's not yin or yang, but it's, it's, it's one. Of, I think it might be the only country, what she says, that's a combination of both. It's androgynous. Well, it, it's balanced. Yeah. Uh, so let's say like the Western Europe, 
When I say androgynous, I mean like an inner androgyny, yeah. right? A perfect, yeah, a perfect internal balance of masculine and feminine, yeah. So, you know, whereas like the, the Western year, which is probably the fallen branch mm -hmm. of the European civilization, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Russia and the old Slavic sphere being the original West, the, the countries like uh, Europe, France, Germany, very young energy, very dominant young energy, colonize the world. And the countries like China, Latin America were very yin energy, mm -hmm. right? So they became colonized because they weren't able, they didn't have that the, sort of the Aries fire to, yeah. to fight back. That wasn't their way. But anyway, Shanghai, you know, it's a very, it's a natural EMF balancing stone. So I put that in there. So basically a very simple combination of materials. It really came about in the 1990s uh, used to, harmonize or balance the energy in your space mm -hmm. so it's not like it blocks the signals right. but what it does is uh there is a subtle energy component to uh the emf from basically digital computer signals wi-fi that's not recognized by the mainstream and it's very anti-biological because it's uh it's very harsh on the body. These are not natural signals. They're not like sine waves. Yeah. They're sort of like yeah, square yeah. waves or triangle waves. And I would compare it to, I mean, you can appreciate this, right? We've all been to a party. Maybe it's a band or DJs. Yeah. If the sound is bad and the DJs in the red, or it's like peaking. If you looked at the sound waves, they're not nice, clean sine mm. waves like this. No. It's like jaggies. There's distortion. Yeah. And I in five, five minutes, you want to leave because it's like... I can't do it. Like, I can't do it. I definitely can't do it with the shitty sound system. But at this point, if it's not pristine, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, you know, I like function one. And there's a few that's others. A, that, that's what I was going to say. You have, like, yeah. the turbo sound, the function one. No, I like you, function you, one. You can be literally up to the speakers. Yeah. And, you know, the next day, you'll have, like, little to no... Well, the whole thing with the function one, right. like, I had a friend who worked yeah. in the sound industry, and he said that, like, yeah. that stuff has been tested and tested and tested again and has been proven to help induce transcendent experiences, the function one sound system. Well, I mean, it's just like the, yeah. uh, the singing bowls and the, the sound toning now. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's very uh, relaxing because it's very kind of, like, smooth... And they're natural organic mm -hmm. waves. And, you know, you have to imagine that, say, you had a bad sound system. It's just like grating. And very interesting that the, the bass lines in a lot of the music now, it's like, like metal pans and things like that. A, a lot, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like yeah. a lot of the, uh, um, yeah. you know, what's it called? The uh, dubstepy, trap steppy, all that kind of stuff, like, has a very metallic sound to it to me. It sounds like someone is cleaning yeah. the pan with the Brillo pad. Well, I think they're putting... Uh, I'm, I think they're putting some kind of carrier waves into the, yes. into the, the bass lines now. Well, I, mean, like, I don't know if you've listened to any of the work I've done with Mark Devlin, but we talked about the kinds of information that's being piggybacked on some of these frequencies and that it's actually carrying packets of information that have nothing to do with, you know, the way the music sure. sounds. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, ba but basically that's the idea that, um, you know, age of Aquarius, mm -hmm. the Aquarius is the air sign. You know, so, and if you look at Aquarius, it, it, the sign even looks like, like a Wi-Fi sign. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like waves in the air. So, and, you know, literally now we have Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's time to start understanding the invisible world, mm -hmm. you know, and that includes healing technology, frequency technology, but also understanding, even though with your naked eye, you cannot see these waves but it is definitely affecting you. Mm -hmm. So now we have, the great thing is that we have a lot of tools like the pyramids. There's, there's also the tensor ring mm -hmm. and uh, I sent you a pendant. Yeah. These, these are a great technology because it's very lightweight, but the key is the length it's cut to. Uh -huh. So, uh, and the, the cubits, they say, it's like the measuring foot they use in the ancient megalithic structures. Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah. The, 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 so de depending yeah. on the, uh, the length it's cut to, I mean, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was BS, honestly, until I tested it, mm -hmm. the test of the energy. And you, some people, they do the pendulum dowsing. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I have a video on my YouTube. It's uh, Akaida TV. It's uh, Akaida and TV on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're doing the muscle test that yeah, holds the practitioners yeah. use. Yeah. Now, 
some people out there, they may not have an energy tool, right? But you do have a cell phone, which is like the bad tool. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, uh, I can send you the link where people can go look like how to test energy tools. Uh -huh. And if you do the muscle test without anything, that's sort of a baseline, mm -hmm. and then hold your cell phone, the arm will drop because your frequency just went. Yep. And the, the, when you do a muscle test with a strong energy tool, it'll be harder to, you know, you're not trying to push down like this, but you're just seeing a baseline. Yeah. If you're seeing of, it, of, it's of yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll see that the stronger the tool is, uh, the more that resistance you'll get, you know? So, yeah. uh, you know, the tensor rings, great tool, pyramids, great tool. There's, there's a whole host of things out there that people can use. And mm -hmm. actually right now I'm, uh, so we're, we're in February. So March is actually the last month I'm going to have my basic pyramids. For mm -hmm. five years, I'm only one guy. You know, I am my own company. So mm -hmm. I've been pumping out, I sent out hundreds of pyramids all over the world. But I can't maintain the pace now. So I'm focusing on more high-end, like power devices, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more art style. Like uh, That one you showed me, the other, the, you showed me a very artistic piece the other day that oh, I yeah. totally felt it and it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah I would love, yeah. yeah. I, I spent many years yeah. in Brazil. I spent, I spent I can, many. As soon as you lift that, I can just feel, <laughs> yeah. I, I spent many years in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So this is what. Gorgeous. These, these are the cowrie shells that they have in uh, Umbanda and Candomblé. Yeah. It's African Ooh. type religions, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I make some polished pieces, but basically, you know, I work even before we just, we got on, we started the, the video. Yeah. I was like soldering. <laughs> I was like, I'm working on my pyramids, you know, I'm working 24 seven. So I'm trying how to, how long does one like that? Like that one you just showed me, how long does that take you to make? A polished pyramid? Not that long. I could probably do it in a day and a half. Mm -hmm. But the powered pyramids, the I ones have, with the, what about the ones with the Rodan coils and stuff in them? Yeah, that could take like, uh, my turnaround now is like two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, but I, I can probably turn one around in maybe four days. Wow. Because see that coil and, and the regular ones that I have, they're uh, gold color. Mm -hmm. This was a special request, uh, green. Mm -hmm. Some people like it, use it for manifestation. Uh, yeah. You know, green's like the money color. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but basically this, this uh, donut coil in here. Yeah. I have to hand Marco wrap. Marco Dan, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's like that 369 uh, Tesla Vortex. Yeah. So I have to hand wrap that. And then I have to solder all the connections. And then, then it's art too. So it has to be two. two and do you cut it the same length like those tensor rings? No, it, it's more about the, uh, the number of wraps. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, so it has to be two things. One, energetically, it has to work. And I actually, I'm running, I'm running the frequency. I have it patched in right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, this is a frequency generator. So yeah. I, I'm, so it has to technically work, but then it's also art. So it has to be both. Yeah, I can you know, feel so, it. I can yeah. feel that. I can feel that. I'm super sensitive, but it's a powerful tool. I can feel it through. <laughs> I can feel it through oh, the yeah. zoom. Well, you know what? If, if you have any high energy tool. Uh, if you are doing body work, yeah. if you're doing hands-on healing, if you're doing, uh, visualizations for clearing, like they uh -huh. do in Qigong. Yep. Uh, I just finished a month long online class during the basic, uh, uh, energy, like grounding your energy, mm -hmm. good circulation, you know, same concept in Chinese medicine, yeah. clean flow and then clearing your energy. Yeah. Uh, if you have you know, you could just have like a regular NG tool, like tensor ring or pyramid, but yeah. if you run a powered frequency, it's greatly magnified. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just leverage. I tell people, and, and this is a thing too. I, I love what I do. You know, I think, I don't think I could go back to the nine to five job. I just want to, can you find a job where you work with pyramids all day? I don't right. think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I would love to. Yeah. But, but I, I get comments like, oh, he just wants to do it for the money. Whatever. Let me tell you, bro. You come work for me and slave all night because, like, I love what I do, but I, I work pretty hard. And there's a lot of – if I was just interested in money, you know, with – you know, I'm not, I'm not the smartest, but I, I could have gotten to finance or something like that. Yeah. If it was purely money, there's a lot of other ways to do it. Probably because yeah. you're, you're literally working with your hands, right? There's yeah. a lot of other things I could do. But uh, I think the 
uh, something like this, like a like the orgone pyramid. Yeah, it, it's a uh, it's a great entryway into hands on understanding energy. Yeah, and this is another thing too. Uh, it's DIY. Yeah. So the, you can look online, and I'll I don't have any videos right now, but I'll I'll post some in the future. Do it yourself. The, from the first time you can in say like a day or a weekend make a pyramid or you can even cast it into use a muffin pan mm -hmm. right so like little muffin they call it tower buster yeah some people they throw these by the cell phone yeah. towers yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can make something that's going to work it may not be polished and an art piece but it's it'll work right so that's very empowering that uh i felt my life change yeah from, i mean you can appreciate this from like you know, 10 plus years, it might be even like close to 20 years now, just looking into the information. Right. Mm -hmm. But then, but then uh, with all these, you know, conspiracies and things that are going on, how can you as one person change, change things, right? You're going to, you're going to shake your fist at the chemtrails. Right. <laughs> but when you say like when I made my first pyramids and then I gave it to somebody or I sent it out, they bought one, then I get the feedback, like, hey, I'm getting better sleep. Yeah. But that was, I felt, I went from the fear mode, cause, cause you know, uh, and this is like subconscious level, I'm not like in fear, but if there's so many things going on, you feel powerless to do anything, that can be kind of depressing. Yeah, totally, but, <laughs> totally. But, but when you empower yourself, yeah, and you, I literally made, and it's just not me. The number of people making these kind of pyramids has like probably quadrupled in the last couple of years. Yeah, and that's a great thing. You are you, you're getting the direct feedback. It's not like subtle. People say like, no, I know it's a difference. I can muscle test it, and then you're you're pushing these frequencies out of your space. You're empowering yourself. You know that is that's a major shift. It's a major shift. So that's. That's a great thing. So that's the thing with, um, especially the pyramid, it might take a lot, it might take more to like make tensor rings, but let's say, I, I would say everybody probably has a muffin pan. Yeah. Right? You could get some resin. The, you could go to the pyramid store for the shavings, the pyramid store called eBay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then like uh, get some quartz crystal, throw it together. And this, that's the thing. It, it, it's mainly up here. It's the mental shift. Yeah. It's the mental shift. And uh, yeah, I mean, how, cra how, 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 how crazy is that, Emily? My life. That, like, like somebody else's, what they would consider like junk. It's like yeah. plastic. I mean, if you think about it, although I polish them, this is kind of crude. It doesn't come out of a factory. This was like done by hand, right? Yeah. Well, but, th but this, is liberation. This. this is liberation. I love that I just, I'm looking at this and it comes and it looks beautiful. And then you look closely and I'm like, I see nails in there. I see, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, so yeah, it is. It's like beautified junk on a certain level, right? To um, somebody else. But, but that's, that's yeah. the thing. It's understanding um, the way materials work energetically. Mm hmm well, that's how yeah. all the all the kinds of free energy devices and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they're running off of, you know, like there's cold fusion devices that run off of a few coins, right? Uh, just the metal from the coins, mm -hmm. you know? Well, and, one thing that's very powerful, although I haven't worked with it like personally, is another, because see, I've worked with many energy tools. I even have like a pyramid frame here, right? Some people... Yep. We have some of these frames. This is a Nick Edwards when he passed away a few years ago, but uh, he was one of the original pyramid I power guys. That. With, wow. That's yeah. with, with uh, Pat, Flan Pat Flanagan and uh, Nick Edwards. They were some of the original pyramid guys, but you know, working with frames, working with Shungite, working with tensor rings, working with pyramids, I get the same feeling mm -hmm. no matter what tool, if the energy is high. So there's many different ways to get this kind of energy, but another yeah. way is, uh, if you because you're talking about magnets mm -hmm. if you buck magnets or you put them end to end and mm -hmm. they're opposing yeah that creates energy a field also a field effect also a positive mm -hmm. uh, field effect so you know i think you know i i think it was just meant to happen i never thought in my life i'd be working with this kind of stuff yeah but uh 
you know, there's all kinds of information online people can look into. They can look up, you know, Organite, Orgone Pyramid, the Tensor Rings, and there's a whole host of other energy tools. And mm -hmm. you can start, you know, definitely with uh, the so-called Organite or the Pyramids, or let's say you can even start with a muffin. You can do it yourself. Yeah. You can uh, buy it from somebody, but that's basically, you know, that, this is another thing especially in light this week of the whole Jesse Smollett thing, right? Mm -hmm. The country, especially we're in the U S and America, everything is so polarized. Now you cannot even talk to people and get two sentences sentences in. And then they'll say, okay, you're on the other side. I'm shutting down. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. conservative, you're liberal, whatever that, you know? Yeah. But we're all human beings. We, we're all on this planet and we all want to better ourselves, right? So instead of kind of going head to head like that where people are so fractured, is maybe go the energetic route and go around the mental bias. Yep. And you say, hey, you know what? This is really cool. Like it's, it's a pyramid. Why don't you put it on your bed stand? Yeah. And then the person says like, hey, you know, it's really weird, but. I got better sleep. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely agree that like, yeah. you know, I've gotten so much better uh, results in mm -hmm. uh, communicating things to people when I stopped trying to mm -hmm. hit them over the head with information and instead mm -hmm. just like put sort of some of the magic of this kind of energy, whether mm -hmm. it be from tools or whether it be from, you know, those of us who get into this tend to have some energetic or psychic or telepathic gifts, right? Let a little of that fly, let them ask questions about it and you've got them. And then, mm -hmm. and then they're open to a lot of other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but just hitting them over the head with the, you know, uh, you know, so, you know, new world order, you know, mm -hmm. FEMA camps, chemtrails, all this kind of stuff. It, it, most people don't want to hear that, but if you can make them feel better or give them something that is like, seems magical or intriguing to them just for us, even for a second. It's kind of, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a spark. It's kind of like when, as a kid, you discovered the first thing you really thought was interesting or loved or what I remember the first, you know, like I liked gymnastics. When I saw somebody do flips, it was like, I want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So when you can, you know, when you see your beautiful pyramids and feel the effect of it, that makes me feel good. I want, wh what is this person doing? What else are they into? Mm -hmm. What are, you know, like, and, and, and then you've kind of got someone and you can sort of almost take them on a, you know, a spiritual shamanic journey it's a much better way than hitting them over the head with information. Yeah. And we're all on different paths and some people we will never agree with. Right. But I, guess, I guess, guess, guess what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because people can come to these tools in their own way. Uh, whatever walk of life, whatever background they come from. Yeah. You know, if they experience it, they'll recognize the benefit. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, basically it's open source kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And even some of these things are DIY. So, yeah. you know, that's a, so that's a great thing. And that's, that's kind of just what I'm doing now is just, uh, you know, focusing on making these tools and advising people. And yeah, I, I have a loose association with some um, companies like Spooky2 Rife Machine. Some people may know. And there's uh, Adam in England. He has a company called Burkana Labs. He, he works with the radionics. Yeah. Kind of his, uh, his board here. Yeah. So I work with a lot of energy tools and, you know, to me, it's fun. It's kind of fun. Totally. You know? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as we're winding the first hour down here, why don't you let people know, uh, obviously you're, you have your, 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 your website, you have your pyramids, mm -hmm. let people know your website, what you're doing, kind of what you're into. You also, I think do some readings with numerology and whatever, mm -hmm. let people know where they can find you, what you're up to. And, uh, and we'll move on over into the second hour. Okay. So uh, my name is Masaki, and my website is akaida.com. It's A-K-A-I-D-A.com. Uh, YouTube, Akaida TV. I have a Patreon right now. It's uh, Pyramid Power. So, I'm, you know, if people have deeper questions about some of the tools, I'm putting stuff there. And, yeah, the, the only thing is, like, these basic pyramids, I'm doing my last runs right now. And I'm going to start to focus on more high-end stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – come check it out. And the, the other thing I really want to emphasize that I've never done before is this is to put in the viewer's hands. You know, I don't want to just say come to my site and you buy my stuff. 
this is, I think it's more important for people to just kind of feel it out. Like I was doing, you know, years ago to mm -hmm. just understand, Oh, these things exist and just kind of look into them and, you know, do, you know, it's, it's very fun too. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Find You know, like, find your own way through it it's a much more interesting mm -hmm. way than just only picking up information from others kind of mm -hmm. feel your way through it and sort of blaze your own path all right mm -hmm. guys so that will wrap it up for the public hour if you want to hear the second hour we're going to talk about the uh, mind control music and metaphysics of <laughs> los angeles california you can find us at patreon.com forward slash off planet media we'll see you on the other side all right This is Off Planet Radio.